Hello my sweets and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to shade in Clip Studio Paint and we're going to look over a whole lot of cool tips and tricks involving lighting, ambient color, and blend modes. So right now I have this character who is not really shaded, I don't count the eyes, and I'm going to use her as a model to show you how to shade um, and how to make it look like she is in different scenes such as a sunny scene or at night. So let's start out with something really basic. Right click this layer, the color layer, selection from layer, create selection. Alright, I'm just going to click this box so that the border isn't there because it's distracting. New layer, set the blend mode to multiply. Alright, so now we're going to go and get a regular pen and get a warm color that is kind of dark, not too dark. With uh, multiply, you don't want to have the colors too dark. And then we're just going to go through and shade it. This video is not going to teach you how to uh, make the light rays fall on the character, how to make uh, re realistic shadows. That is a topic for another video. This is just how to best use Clip Studio Paint's shading features. So as you can see, this shadow is really, really dark. We can um, make the layer lighter. We can make it lighter later on, or we can, uh, or we can just choose a different color. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade it, and then I'm going to lower the opacity of the shading layer so that everything is lighter. This is possibly the simplest way to shade and it's very useful when you're animating and you don't want to have to choose a different color for every single shade like uh, like the skin here we would have to get a dark brown for the hair we would have to get a uh, dark green using a blend mode makes all of this a whole lot easier so to lower the intensity we just lower the opacity we have lighting that looks like it's just in a uh, in a room with fluorescent lights, and as we go up to a hundred percent, it looks really stark, like maybe a sunset. Also, these colors are warm because we chose red. Let's see what happens if we choose blue. So we can just click on layer color here and fill it in both with blue, and now it looks like a nighttime scene. We can see how that will uh, affect it by grabbing some daytime pictures and some nighttime pictures. Let's take sunset. Oops. <laughs> put it into the selection. So deselect before you input a background. So we have sunset. And then we have night. Blue shadows for night red shadows for warm lights. Okay, so that is the first way to shade and how to make it look like it is a uh, different and how to make it blend in with the background. So let's hide that layer. Now let's say you don't want to actually go through and draw every single line for your shading. So what we're gonna do for that is let's, let's uh, duplicate this layer. Alright, then we're going to go to Edit, Tonal Correction, Hue and Saturation and Luminosity, and we're going to lower the brightness and raise saturation just a little. Alright, now it looks like she's really in shadow. Then we're going to set the brush to transparent. You could use an eraser if you like, but I prefer to use the brush I'm normally using so that everything looks the same. And then let's draw it as if there's light coming from behind her. Let's say that the light is coming from over this side. That means there'll be a whole lot to erase over here. and only a little bit to erase over here and everything is on the edges closest to the right side the face will have some slight lighting here
mostly at the bottom. Now we have dramatic lighting from the back. And it is warm light. You can tell because the color on the skin is more brown than blue. If it was cold lighting, it would be over in the pink to purple scale. So let's duplicate layer and make this work for our night scene. We're going to go to tonal correction again, and this time we're going to go to color balance. Drag the uh, dials over to blue and just a little bit of cyan. The more of this you add, the more garish it will look until it looks like she's underwater. It can also look more mysterious and more ambient, but if you want it to look softer, don't add too much of this. Blue is what we want. And now, just like that, she fits in perfectly with our night scene. Warm lights, cold lights. For the third shading method, let's select this layer again. This time we're going to use the airbrush. And we're going to use a different blend mode. We're going to use overlay. Overlay is not as stark as multiply. And you want to use colors closer to the actual color of the image, and they have to be much darker. So, let's take a very dark pink magenta sort of thing that actually goes into burgundy way but down there. Now if we were doing this with multiply, let's just duplicate the layer and see what happens if we set it to multiply. We can see that this is really really dark, whereas overlay blends in a whole lot better with the colors. This is a good style to use for a webcomic since soft shading is really quick and easy to do. Since it is so soft, it's hard to notice mistakes with it, so you can have um, a whole lot of freedom to do whatever you like. Let's see what happens if we use blue in this instance. Set it to overlay. There's only a slight difference, which is why I prefer to use um, multiply for most of my shading. So overlay works if you're not trying to do a lot of ambient lighting, like if you don't really care if it looks like she is standing in front of a sunset. There's not much difference between the red and the blue. But what we can do to counter that is duplicate this base layer and adjust its color. So let's change it to blue. We're also going to make it darker. Oops, that's a bit too dark. And then it goes with the night scene. It also works with the sunset scene, but you might not want to have this color be quite so dark. You might want it to be a little more ambient, so lower the opacity. Alright, so now we have a few different styles of coloring. Let's go through them real quick. We have soft blue, which is using an overlay layer, and blue colors to blend into this night background. 
Then we have soft red, which is overlay colors to blend into an ambient background or this sunset that we have right here. Then there's self shaded red, which blends in a whole lot better with this sunset and is also backlit, which is a dramatic choice. Self shaded blue, which goes with the night scene. And the backlight it also makes it look like there's a street light somewhere near her. So that's interesting. The multiply layer self shaded blue. This is the one where uh, we actually drew in all the lines ourselves, which can be kind of time consuming. That's why I use this uh, this method often, where I just duplicate the layer and darken it. And then we have the self shaded red, which goes with this sunset scene. So these shading techniques can really help you if you're doing an animation where you have to draw the same kind of shading over and over or a web comic or a regular comic and uh, you want to do it quickly and not you know break your hand doing so much shading for every single um, cell so I hope this video is useful to you I had a whole lot of fun making it in my last clip studio paint tutorial I had a poll where people could choose if they wanted to see my um, tutorial characters Ray and Mira or a new character and somebody voted for a new character so here she is I'm not sure what to name her yet so uh, leave your choice in the comments and we'll see what her name is so um, thank you guys so much for watching this video continue to leave re tutorial requests in the comments I always read them and I actually have a list of tutorials that I want to do I'm really excited so thank you for leaving feedback keep Please keep doing it. Don't forget to be sweet and subscribe so that you can stay up to date on all my new videos. I will see you guys later. Bye!